In this video, we're going to look at how mute and solo buttons work on tracks and mix buses in Harrison Mix Bus 32C. All right, guys, so I have to admit that sometimes using Harrison Mix Bus is a little mind boggling because it works in such a way that where most of us youngins don't really remember working on consoles or mixing desks and we're so used to a doll style workflow where we can just create tracks and make them do whatever we want. And Mixbus is really not set up like that. You really do have to have the mindset of working on a console and the signal flow and the routing of how a console works. And if we can understand that, then we'll be well on our way to understanding how Mixbus uses mutes and solos in the context of a mix. So let's get right into it here. And we're going to start dealing with some tracks. So if I solo, let's say loop one, okay? Notice that all the other tracks have a yellow box around the mute. So basically what is happening is when you solo something, it inherently mutes everything else so and these are all grouped together you can see the loops are grouped so all three are going to come on at the same time if i want to bypass the group option i just hold down shift and i can solo just one and all the other tracks are being muted i can use the middle button on a mouse which i have a three button mouse basically a left and a right click and then a middle so if I hold down the wheel, it will momentarily solo a track until I release the wheel, and then it comes back off. So I don't have to click and then click again. I can just hold down the mouse wheel. It'll momentarily solo the tracks, and then it comes off, <laughs> and then it starts scrolling automatically. So in its simplest form, that is how these solos work on a track. Now let's go ahead and mute tracks. All right. Now when I mute a track, it's not going to solo by default every other track. I'm just muting the tracks that I want to mute. And the same goes for like the mutes on the synths. All right. So now let's look at actual audio buses, or you can also call them aux buses or utility buses. There's multiple different names that we could call this. And in the manual, it does discuss utility buses, aux buses, audio buses, foldback buses. I mean, there's all kinds of buses, mix buses. We're just bussing around all over the place, okay? So I do have this Rhodes track sent to a reverb aux bus. And when I solo the Rhodes track, you can see that this aux bus is not muted, but it has a green solo box around it. So let's actually listen to what we have here. Okay, so you can hear that by soloing the actual Rhodes track, it is also soloing the bus that is being sent to. Now, what I noticed earlier in the preferences is if you go to preferences and then mixer, we have all these other solo options. So there are solo controls or listen controls, exclusive solo, show solo muting, and soloing overrides muting. All right, so for instance, these guitar one tracks right here are being muted right now. But if I press solo, then it's going to bypass the mute and it's going to solo the track. So check this out. Press and play on this chorus two here. So we can hear that these guitar tracks are muted, but if I press solo, now they're back in. Okay. And there's the full band mix there, minus the vocals. All right, let me go back to preferences and let's uncheck the soloing overrides muting. You'll see that it's going to have the reverse effect now. So I'm going to go ahead and solo these just so I can hear them. All 
right. Now it's muted. And now by pressing solo, it's not overriding the mute. All right, so just know that if you want that option available, you have to go to the preferences, mixer, soloing overrides, muting, okay? All right, there's another option here in preferences called exclusive solo. All right, so what exclusive solo is doing is if we actually use command and control, if you hold that down and click on a solo, it's only allowing me to solo one thing at a time, okay? So I can't have the guitar soloed and then go and solo the bass. That's what exclusive solo is doing, okay? So that might be something that you want. I'm not really sure. But let's go back to exclusive solo and then check that. And now we can solo as many things as we want. So let's hear what this sounds like in action. All right, there's the bass. Let's say we want to go listen to some electric guitars. And then I want to listen to just the reverb here. It's also going to solo the roads, which is fine. Here's a synth. Here's some cymbals. And here's the drum kit. All right, so that's actually kind of cool. I mean, I can see how I would use that in a regular session. If I just want to jump around and solo a bunch of different stuff and not have to worry about clicking on a solo and then clicking on that again and then clicking on a solo of another track and basically just automatically does it for you. So that is what exclusive solo means. And once again, preferences, check the box for exclusive solo if that's what you want to do, okay? Now, solo controls are listen controls. Let's check that one and see what happens here, okay? Here's the drum kit again. Okay, so I noticed the drums get a little bit louder than everything else. Once I engage that, let's listen to some synths. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I don't know if I would actually use that or not. Ah, right, so now let's look at the mix buses and see how mute and solos work. So what the manual says is the mix buses are a totally separate mixer than the audio tracks themselves, okay? So when you solo the drums, you are essentially muting a bunch of other stuff. So let me take off the solo isolate first, because that's what I did in a previous video. And it might be right, might be wrong, I'm not really sure. But we're just gonna go ahead and do solo isolate, or unsolo isolate. And all I did there was just right click on solo, and then it brings up those options, okay? So right now, let's just solo a mix bus, and let's do the drums and see what happens. Okay, notice how nothing's being heard. Okay, now in this instance, we are sending the drums to a band bus and it's not coming in the master. So let's see what happens if we solo the drums and send it to the master. Okay, so there you go. You can actually hear it now. So if you wanna hear the drums, we also have to solo the band bus. But by soloing the band bus, you are in turn, <laughs> by soloing the band bus, you are now in turn muting all the other buses, even though the drums, bass, guitars, keys, and strings are feeding into the band bus. What the crap? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get that. I mean, I understand inherently when you solo a bus, it mutes everything else, but not if those other mix buses are feeding into this bus, you would want to hear those buses. You'd want to hear them, right? So 
That, that didn't really make sense to me. Let's go ahead and do Solo Isolate. And when I do that, now you can start hearing the other options. All right, so this is a workaround that you have to mentally do in your head is if you are sending a mix bus to another bus, those mix buses need to be in solo isolate. So that way, when you do actually solo said bus that you're sending the other buses to, then you can actually hear those buses, okay? So, because otherwise, you're just playing along. I still can't solo just the drums. It doesn't make sense. Okay, and the exclusive solo is not working on the mix buses either. So this is a, definitely a situation where I'm just really confused. <laughs> This is definitely a situation where I think some leeway needs to happen in the actual routing here because it just doesn't make sense to where if you want to hear the drums, then you solo the drums and the actual tracks that are feeding those drums need to be able to be heard. Why, why would you just not be able to do that? It doesn't make sense. So let's go to solo oscillate and let's take that back off. And okay, we're good for that. So solo the drums and we have nothing. If I go to spill and then I want to hit solo here, I can hear it on the individual tracks which is cool. But doing solo on the actual mix bus is not doing it for me. So as it says here in the manual, we can see that like a real console, the mix buses are a separate mixing stage. Imagine the eight or 12 and 32 C mix buses are like a second standalone mixer. When you solo a mix bus, the other mix buses are implicitly muted. There's no interaction between the inputs and the mix buses. So soloing a mix bus does not implicitly mute or solo any tracks. Ah, that's aggravating. And then talking about utility buses, utility buses aren't really a mixing stage at all. They are just a signal path where you can combine other paths or split them out from a multi-channel plug-in, for example. In this case, when you solo a utility bus, then it also has to solo all the things feeding into it. Similarly, if you solo anything, it has to make sure that the utility buses that it feeds are soloed, and this causes other stuff to get implicitly muted. You know, and we've already seen that with the example of, let's say, the electric guitar aux bus. When I solo the electric guitar, this is also highlight in green which means it's also soloed because when you solo a track that is feeding an aux bus that aux bus has to be soloed as well otherwise you wouldn't hear the aux bus you wouldn't hear the tracks but for some reason when you solo an actual mix bus which we just read in the manual is said it is an actual standalone mixer that the tracks that are feeding into the mix bus are not soloed as well and you're not able to just simply solo a mix bus and hear what's feeding it i get it we're trying to be a console here but this is a digital product and there's got to be other workarounds that you can do because what's the point of sending tracks to a mix bus and not being able to solo that mix bus to hear those tracks? That's really the whole point, is it not? So, I don't know. That's, uh, that's a slight frustration on my part. And it does say here at the end, the best plan is to keep your signal path simple. 
and you'll get the best results. Just because you can add a bunch of buses and options doesn't mean that you should. Well, I mean, this really should be left up to the user to do whatever he or she wants. And right now, me as a user, I want to be able to send all my drums to a mix bus, process those however I want, and then I want to be able to solo the mix bus and hear what the processing is doing and not hear everything else in the song. So that's just my personal two cents. So I know a lot of guys out there have questions about this. This is me working through the issues of learning another doll and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, and trying to change my mindset. It's like, all right, if I want to hear the bass, then for me, I just have to hit spill. I go and solo the actual bass tracks, and then I can hear what's being sent to that bus, like so. Now, if I solo the actual bass bus, it mutes the actual tracks. So, once again, it's just doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, it would be great if we could do exclusive solo on the mix buses to where if I have the drum soloed, that's cool. If I go ahead and hit the guitar solo, it unsolos the drums and it just solos the guitar. So notice if I do have these in solo isolate, like the guitar, and I solo the band bus, now I hear the guitars. But it's not actually me going and soloing the guitar, because if I do that, it takes off the solo from the band and it just solos the guitar, but then I can't hear anything. So, hello, this is, uh, this is a little weird. But I can choose Spill and I can go and solo these guitars. I can solo these guitars or these ones. All right, so there you go. That is my deep dive into trying to understand the section of the manual for mute and solo. Oh, and there's a lot of good stuff in here, but still, it's just, you know, the mindset of working like a console is not always the best thing to do, in my opinion. So, if you have any questions, go back through the video, watch me work through tracks, work through auxiliary buses, and then working through the actual mix buses themselves. And, please, if you have any questions or comments... Leave those down below. I will get back to you. I am learning mix bus as I go. And that's really the reason why I'm doing this whole video manual is it's forcing me to go through the manual and put flesh to bone on some of these concepts that I'm not used to thinking about when using Reaper or even when I use like Sonar or Pro Tools or any of the other dolls I've used over the years. So it's just a matter of learning what Mixbus does and then changing your mindset to that and not trying to force Mixbus into doing something that it doesn't want to do in the first place, i.e. soloing a drum bus and not hearing any drums. <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. I'm Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.